<laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Facebook Live at the back of our Bird Center. You know, oh, by the way, happy Veterans Day to everybody, especially our, our veteran men and women, armed forces people, and, and uh, early responders. We, we appreciate all that you do. Thank you for your service. Um, <laughs> Every time I do a talk, uh, from the time I was a Nature Center employee to now, uh, I speak to a lot of different groups from kindergartners all the way up. And, I, and we talk about backyard bird feeding and attracting birds to your backyard. I always start with the basics. What are the three things that are required for animals to live? Food, water, and shelter. And of those three, well, what is the most important of those three things to, to provide to attract and help wildlife and the answer is easily water and it's also the most overlooked that part of backyard bird feeding that uh, people tend to when they set up the, their backyards uh, and, and want to attract birds they tend to forget about water um, well these cold cold mornings that we've had here in the last few days in the 20s uh, really illustrates that point even more because uh, you know during the dry periods of summer water is extremely hard for birds to find but in the cold months of winter, especially December, January, and early February, unfrozen water uh, can be extremely hard for birds to find. And we know that in harsh winters, I mean, the last couple have been mild, but in the normal winter, in a harsh winter, uh, water can be the survival factor that's most important to birds. More birds will die of dehydration than actually die of starvation in, uh, in harsh winters like that because they can make their own body heat if they can find food and berries and seeds and things are available and your bird feeders are available but if they can't find unfrozen water then they're going to die well I, you know one of the comments i'll always get when we talk about bird bass is oh i live on a lake well think about your lake how does it freeze when it gets cold it freezes from the shore out to the deeper water so it's that lower that, that, that close shallow water that's important to birds and wildlife and that's the first that freezes for them, and so they don't have access to it. And so they have to go out into the lake and in, in, in exposed areas, and a lot of times they can't even get to the water they need because they really need shallow water. Birds need water for two different reasons. They also they need to, to drink, like you and I do. They have to hydrate that way. But also, birds need water to for the health of their feathers. That's why people think it's crazy when they see a bird bathing in uh, freezing cold temperatures. You'll see them out there splashing around in a bird bath. They don't understand that. How in the world can they do that? Well, they need that water to heal their feathers. It's called preening. And they take that water and they put it in their feathers and they zip, re-zip the feathers back together and keep them healthy. Uh, that way they're not, they don't become brittle and break uh, because you lose too many feathers or break too many feathers, then flying is hard for you. And of course, if you can't fly and you're a bird, then pretty much you're, you're doomed. So. Uh, yeah, so they need water for two different reasons, and so when when lakes freeze out, uh, and, and the deeper water does them no good, they can they might can get a drink of it, but they're out there in the middle of the open, and they're very exposed to predators, and they don't like that. So bird baths are extremely important. Uh, I always say you'll steal your neighbor's birds. Uh, if you've got people who feed birds all around you, but they don't provide water, you're going to get more to the birds because they've got to come to your water. And not only will cardinals and chickadees and titmice and all the, the regular feeder birds need water, but also a lot of birds that don't come to bird feeders in the winter, like robins and uh, bluebirds and cedar waxwings and mockingbirds, hermit thrushes, several species that are here in the winter months will come to a heated bird bath uh, to, to drink and to also to bathe. So um, you'll, you'll get a greater diversity of birds in your backyard, not just when you're feeders, but when, from the bird bath as well. So. What makes a good bird bath? First and foremost, uh, a couple of different depths of water. You know, we have pedestal bird baths, and we have deck mount bird baths, we have hanging bird baths, we have lots of different ways to present it, but what's important is the depth of the water because not all birds are the same size. You know, a chickadee requires a different depth of water than uh, a robin does. So uh, a good bird bath uh, will either have a, a built in a couple of different depths of water. This bird bath has a, heat, a hump built in the middle, so you get two different uh, na depths of water naturally. But if your bird bath doesn't do that, we recommend putting a flat rock in the bird bath somewhere so that you'll have two different good depths of water. Uh, bird baths that are too deep 
and people's fountains and a lot of decorative uh, uh, and then whiskey barrel things that, that people convert into bird baths. A lot of times those are just too deep for, for birds. So you need to uh, help them out and provide some way for them to get to shallower water within whatever method you use for your bird bath, whatever you use to use for a bird bath. But our, our, the water needs to be unfrozen. And like I said, these, these cold mornings here recently have really illustrated that. Uh, the, it freezes over pretty quickly, uh, especially in this area. You know, it can, we can get a cold night and, and next thing you know, birds are landing on the ice on top of your bird bath and they can't get to it. So um, there are lots of things in the bird, in the heat, bird bath heater world. I hate calling them heaters. They're actually de-icers. I, I just used a word I don't like to use referring to these guys. Their job, when I say heater, people think, oh, it's a jacuzzi. But no, they, they, a bird bath de-icer's job is to simply keep the water from freezing. So when you plug these in, you can hold them in your hand. They don't get that hot. They're, they're, they're not a, a real heating element like you, you would think of traditionally to keep you and I warm. It's just to keep the water from freezing. And all, a good de-icer has a thermostat inside, and it goes on and off at 35 degrees, so it's not running during the day or on warmer days. Uh, and it only costs pennies to operate. So, you know, people think, oh, no, no, no it's going to make my light bill go up. No, they, these don't cost very much. Uh, they all have short cords. Um, pretty much all, all of them need to be plugged into uh, uh, an outdoor rated extension cord. I like to wrap uh, black electric tape around the connection and, and run it in. I have people who have to run it inside their garage door and plug it inside their garage. Some people have outlets built on the outside of their house. So uh, it, you can use them. I, you can use them on a 100-foot extension cord if you want to, as long as it's an outdoor rated extension cord. So uh, some people like it so that it's close enough to the house they can just plug it right in. That's fine, too. Uh, the, the birds just need that unfrozen water. If you're dedicated enough to go out every morning, at, at early in the morning and dump all the ice out and put some uh, water in there and it's going to freeze up during the middle of the day. Um, you can do that as well, but boy, the de-icers are sure are nice to have. Some bird baths are, are, are heated. The bowls are heated, like this one has the, the heating element built inside the bowl. Um, these are really nice. Uh, they, and the deck mount, now we don't have to go trudging through your yard in the snow and all. But the most important thing is to provide the water. I got elbowed in the side one time uh, at, at, at here because I, I made the mistake of saying that, you know, a trash can lid turned upside down is a bird bath. And the wife hit me in the side with her elbow and said, don't tell him that, I'll have trash can lids all over my yard. But, you know, as a biologist, you're more concerned about, I'm more concerned about the birds and providing the water for them. You know, a good decorative bird bath, I love them. But, you know, material's important. Uh, to make sure that they're not going to freeze and thaw and break in the winter, like concrete will do that, and uh, some of the resin bird baths will do that. So make sure when you invest in a bird bath, it's a good material that can, can stand the outdoor freezing and thawing that goes on. Get a bird bath de-icer, uh, put it in there, and you'll invite so many more birds to your backyard, and you'll be helping them out survive harsh parts of winter. So, hey, right, that's it for this week. Send us in some ideas, uh, like the video, share the videos, that helps us out. And until then, oh yeah, next week is the back is the truckload sale. Don't forget that. That's next weekend. So until then, come on, let's talk birds. Two, one. Would you like to learn more about wild birds? You might want to hit that subscribe button.